Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to talk about stars. When we last left off, we were talking about the Big Bang and how the Big Bang theory as to the formation of our universe, starting from that point to singularity, and then everything just kind of expanding or energy expanding outwards at that point, eventually forming the subatomic particles of quarks, eventually into the protons or neutrons and electrons and eventually forming atoms. And that stuff, those atoms, those earliest atoms, are what formed or coalesced together under, under the force of gravity to form stars. So when we look into an image or a picture like this uh, late at night, what we're looking at is billions or hundreds of thousands, lots of stars in our sky, more than we can see. So what are stars? Stars are nothing more than large masses of gases, uh, hydrogen and helium, for most of them, not all of them, that are held together by gravity. Uh, that gravity pulling them together, producing a tremendous amount of energy, and through the process of nuclear fusion. So it's just an image of the sun uh, from a satellite. And there are a couple of facts that we should know about the sun. One, that it rotates relatively slowly, once every 30 days. Uh, it is about 109 times larger than the Earth, and its temperature is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface and a million, uh, 27 million degrees at the core, so relatively hot there, and that is where nuclear fusion has taken place. There are some parts of the sun that we should know. It's got three major internal structures. We have our core right here, and this is where fusion is taking place. From there, that energy as photons is going to move outwards in the radiative zone into where it hits the convection zone. This is the primary way that energy transfers within this zone. From here, we have the photosphere, which is what we see when we look up into the sun. Then the sun itself has an atmosphere made up of the chronosphere and the corona. The chromosphere right here is what appears to be red during an eclipse. Uh, chroma is coming from a Greek word. And then the corona is the outermost portion of the sun's atmosphere. But really, the most important parts right here are this fusion. Inside that inner core is where we have fusion, that energy radiating outwards into the convection zone, and what we're seeing as the photosphere, just a number of different parts uh, of the sun. I've mentioned this term nuclear fusion a couple of times. It is probably the singularly the most important part of stars that we need to know. Um, our sun, composed of mostly hydrogen and some helium, uh, is what is undergoing nuclear fusion in that core. The process of creating energy in stars is known as nuclear fusion. And it's basically taking hydrogen atoms, forcing them together, producing a helium and some energy. Um, the sun has been going now for about 5 billion years and has enough hydrogen to last another 5 billion years. If we take a look at this diagram on the lower left, we can see, and this is something definitely to copy down right here, nuclear fusion and stars. Notice we have the four hydrogens. Notice the P's for the protons. We take them together under gravity. It's forcing them together and we get a helium which is two protons and a neutron, and also energy. This is that energy we're getting from the sun. So those hydrogens go to form heliums and also getting energy in the process of nuclear fusion. Sun spots, you'll occasionally hear this term, are nothing more than cooler patches on the Earth's, uh, sorry, the sun's surface, uh, where there's violent storms of energy getting poured out. Sunspot activity is cyclic, uh, occurring with the maximum sunspot activity occurring at 10 to 12, 11 year cycles. So from maxima to maxima. Uh, sometimes these sunspots also create what's known as the aurora borealis or disturbances in Earth's magnetic field. We'll talk more about this in class, but I'll go to show you some images of it. It's actually pretty neat. So here's uh, some fire loops along the same lines. You can see that they're the size, a lot bigger than Earth. But this is the northern light or the aurora borealis. So when you're looking at it from space, you'll see this. Down on Earth, this is what we'll see. Basically, the energy that's coming from the sun is interacting with the Earth's magnetic sphere or the atoms, uh, the molecules that are within the air, 
causing them to excite and then when they relax back down and releasing light. And like I said, we'll go more into this process in class. Just want you to be familiar with it at this point. Um, and here it is. So we have the electrons hit air molecule. So this is all that, all that um, energy and matter pouring out from the sun. So the electrons and the ions right here, they interact. So the molecules are excited and they give off light as they calm down. Like I said, this is a nice little diagram to have down. We're gonna go over it in more detail in class. Okay, we're gonna hold off for here until next time. Uh, while we'll spend a little more time on this. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Take care.